Hello, and welcome back to my channel. I have nothing but respect for nail techs, nail artists, estheticians, that sort of thing. But the reality of the situation is, especially now that I don't have a job, I can't afford to get my nails done. I just can't. And even when I had a job, um, it's just not something I can rationalize spending my money on. Like, I love makeup, I love hair. I just can't get myself to care about my nails as much, but I still want them to look nice. So for me, you know, the ideal look of my nails is just they're all about the same length, the same shape, and they're black. I'm not a fancy nail person. I don't want them to be long. I don't want, want a pattern. I just want black nails. And so that's another reason why I can't rationalize spending the money to get them done is because she's just going to paint them black with polish. But then if I paint them black with polish or gel or something, they always chip so fast. So that's why I prefer to wear fake nails. Now, I have done a couple of videos on my channel testing out different sort of fake nail press-on nail kits that sort of thing but I have sort of developed a way to do my nails at the absolute minimum price possible <laughs> and um, that's what I'm going to share with you today is the extremely inexpensive way that I do my nails um, do I have any nail tech training none zero do I know that this is necessarily the healthiest or best way to do your nails no I have no idea but this is just the way that I do them and I thought I would share it with you for anyone else who wants to have nice nails but can't afford to have nice nails <laughs> these days. Also, just as a side note, on my channel I do usually make mention of where things come from and I try to buy as reasonably ethically as I can, um, but when it comes to nails, I do buy them from Wish. <laughs> I realize that that's problematic, but listen, under capitalism there's no way to be 100% ethical all the time. Like I just, you just can't expect me to be, and I, I don't have a job, like you just can't expect me to be ethical about everything all the time. So I do buy my nails from Wish. So here are some of the things that you're going to need to do your, your, your own nails at home for really inexpensively. First and foremost, my Wish nails. So you can buy these nails on Wish and I think you can get them on Shein and a couple of other different websites too. Um, you get a hundred nail tips in here and it costs me about two dollars. I buy the black ones but they do come in a couple of different shades um, and they just come in a variety of sizes. So that's, you know, I have this one and then I have a backup one and then I just ordered another one recently too because when a nail pops off I mean I can put the same nail back on but if it's really looking rough you just replace it. So that's why in this video I'm going to demo for you how I do my nails but the only nail that I was missing at the time that I shot the, the demo was my pinky so I only show you my pinky. I seldom redo my whole hand at once because I just replace nails as they pop off so I'm hardly ever redoing a whole hand at once you know it's 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 much easier I promise to just replace one nail at a time um, so that's why we only do the pinky in today's video but these are my nails I buy them off wish you get a hundred tips in one package I just can't think of a more inexpensive way to do it something else you're gonna need is one of these I use a four-sided little nail buffer thing mine is from Joe Fresh I bought it at the superstore many years ago and I still use the same one just so that you can like file and buff down your, your own nails to get them really smooth and really nice you're gonna obviously need a nail glue now the nail glue that I prefer I actually don't have right now because stores are closed and I need, I need to be able to go to Sally Beauty to get it the one that I like the best is the Sally Beauty one um, it, I think the brand is Beauty Secrets and it's in a squishy bottle and it's not a very practical packaging because the bottle is kind of hard to squish but that is the best nail glue that I have tried so far they also have another brand there that looks similar and it comes in a brush on uh, but that glue is nowhere near as strong do not recommend the brush on only recommend the squeeze uh, that glue is definitely the strongest glue that I've tried and then of course because you're buying such strong nail glue I would also recommend buying 100% uh, acetone because that's really the only way to loosen up those nails should you need to get one off should you need to soak your nail to um, remove remove the glue after one's popped off that sort of thing and then one of the things that I decided to start using recently that I wish I would have used from the beginning is a nail hardener this is the only one I've tried so far but I do like it it's by Sally Hansen it's called hard as nails I bought it at Walmart and I basically put this on my natural nail before I put the glue on doesn't mean that the glue probably doesn't stick as long as it would have otherwise yes but does it kind of save my nail from the nail glue and from whatever damage and stuff yes so I'd rather have the glue sort of wear off maybe faster and the nail pop off faster and have a good nail underneath still uh, rather than the other way so I definitely recommend putting a layer of a hardener or something between your nail and the glue so first off when one of my nails pops off I take a little glass shot glass that I use specifically for my nails I put some acetone in it and then I soak my nail in the acetone. This is to loosen up any leftover glue or any of that leftover hardener that might be on my nail from that last nail that was on. So if you don't have any fake nails on to begin with you can just kind of skip this part but that's what I do and then I use some kind of cuticle pusher like a wooden stick something to try to get off as much of that 
glue uh, from my nail as possible before we move on to the buffing stage. Now, this is where anyone can jump in. So I use the buffing brick on my nail sides one, two, three, four, as instructed, to really make sure that I'm buffing down any sort of grossness, any sort of residue from my nail. I also take this opportunity to cut my nail sort of short and file it down because I just don't want my nail interfering with the length of the fake nail, you know? It's easier if as your nail grows out, your natural nail is a little bit shorter, I find at least. So after I've done side one, side two, side three, side four, my nail's gonna have all that sort of nail dust all over it. I like to go rinse that off. You probably don't have to, but because I'm gonna put on the nail hardener now, I just rinse that off really quickly in the sink, put on the nail hardener and make sure you let that dry. Next, what you're gonna wanna do is go through your pack of 100 fake nails and find the right size. The nice thing about these nails, as opposed to like, I don't know, other nails, is that because they're not sticky, you can just kind of keep pulling out nails and sitting them on your finger as long as you don't have glue on yet, it's gonna be okay. So I keep pulling out nails until I find one that fits. If I'm doing multiple nails at once, I take all the nails out of this step. And then I like to apply the glue to my fingernail rather than the nail. Some people are gonna tell you the other way, but I just find it easier to put it on my nail. I put like a glob in the middle of my nail so that when I push the fake nail, on top of it, um, it'll kind of spread out by itself. So I put the glob on, I sit the nail, kind of, I anchor it back at my cuticle, and then I sort of hinge it down. That's how I sit the nail on my finger to try to get, get it straight, to try to get it to fit, to try to get it as far back as possible because your nail grows from that base, right, at the cuticle. So it's gonna push out over time and then that's usually when it starts to pop off is when it's pushed out a little bit farther. So you're gonna wanna anchor it down there as far back as possible and squish down. When you're choosing a nail, it's important to choose a nail that fits your natural nail as best as possible. If you have to go a little too small, go too small rather than too big. Too big is awful. I actually think it's like not good for your nail, but even just beyond that, it's really uncomfortable. So don't recommend. Go too small if you have to and just really squish it and try to, you know, if the very sides of your nail are visible, nobody's gonna know, okay? Nobody's gonna know. And just pick the nail that fits as best you can or go a little bit smaller. And then once you have the the nail on, you just really squish, like really squish, push as hard as you can without hurting your fingers and you really push it on there. Now, my number one tip that I can give you is do not get your hands wet for as long as possible. For me, when I reapply a nail, I reapply it right before bed so that I have all night of not washing my hands, not doing anything for it to cure, if you will. If you, I found even if I get my nails wet within an hour or two hours of putting that glue on, it loosens up and falls off sooner. So I would recommend doing it right before bed, like you've already washed your face, you've already brushed your teeth, you've already whatever. Um, I would recommend doing whatever you can to make sure your hands don't get wet. I would say, you know, especially if, if you're using a cheaper glue than the Sally Beauty one, like I am using a really, really cheapy crappy glue off Amazon right now, um, as many hours as you can go to let it cure, the better. Because if you get it wet, it's gonna fall off way sooner. And that actually is the case also for many um, store-bought press-on nails. Like if you buy any of those Kiss nails, the Impress nails like I've reviewed on my channel before, I've noticed if you get them wet, even an hour after you put them on, they're gonna pop off. So the longer you can wait, the better. And yeah, after you have the nail pushed on and it's you know ready to go and it's cured and you've, you haven't you have gotten it wet or anything, that's it. If you wanna file it down or cut it or something to make it shorter, you can. I've grown quite used to the length of these, of these nails because they're honestly not very long. Um, so I still find it quite easy to function, to do things, to play with plants and that sort of thing and not have to worry about my nails at the same time. But if you need to file them down, you can. Also, a lot of these cheapy nails, like they, I can tell that they were made on those like strips because they all have little tabs on the end still. So if you have to file those down, you can. I find that within like a day of just functioning, I've worn them down. But anyway, that is the really inexpensive way that I do my fake nails at home. Uh, again, for the lowest price possible, because I can't really afford anything else. Um, I honestly find that these like nails usually last, like I said, until they grow out pretty far. So usually a week and a half-ish, but then like I said, because I just replace individual nails, I don't have to redo the whole hand, especially because it's black and no one's gonna notice. Um, like it's not like every week and a half I'm redoing my whole hand, it's like I'm doing a couple of nails here and there after that week and a half has gone by to kind of edit it, if you will. So it's actually not as much work as it sounds and I find it quite easy. It's so much easier than painting my nails because I would always, I have yet to find a nail polish that 
doesn't chip for me. All of my knuckle blushes that I've ever tried chip so bad. Even if I think that they're not gonna chip on me, like two days after I put them on, they start chipping and it looks awful and I have to re redo my whole hands. It just, it takes too much time, it's too much money, and I'm gonna keep doing my nails like this. Thank you very much. Let me know what you think of how I do my nails in the comment section below. How do you do your nails if you're a nail person? I would love to hear your maybe polish recommendations, maybe fake nail recommendations, anything like that in the comment section below. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, give this video a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already, and I guess I'll see you next time. Bye!